What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with another episode of the Madden 23 Cupcake Relocation Franchise. Week 14 already here as we grow ever closer to that illustrious offseason where we will no longer be the Houston Texans, rather the Austin Armadillos. Can't believe that it's week 14 already. Seems like just yesterday we were starting week one. We were building this terrible team. Now we're already three and nine and only several weeks away from the offseason. I've had a blast with this team so far. I hope that you guys have too. I've gotten really invested in this squad and I can't wait to see what we can do to reshape them and reform them in the offseason. So last week, if you watched that game, Nick Chubb set the single game record for rushing yards. This man came into NRG, came into our domain and put up 298 yards on us, a single season record. So he embarrassed us. We will forever go down in the annals of history as the team that allowed the single season rushing record. So it was it was terrible, um, but it was a pretty incredible Lee bad performance on our part. Incredible performance on Nick Chubb's part. Incredibly bad performance on our part. So I'm very curious with that being said. I'm curious where we rank in terms of defense. I'm sure it's pretty terrible. Probably last place if I had to wager a guess. But let's just take a look and see. So as far as in the AFC. Wow. Actually, we're, we're only third as far as total yards allowed. I thought we'd be much, much worse than that. But no, the Colts are the worst team in the league as far as yards allowed. Our uh, AFC South division rival. Pass yards allowed. Looks like we're actually pretty good on that side of the ball. It's the rushing that I'm concerned about. So let's take a look at this. Yeah, just as I presumed, I mean, dead last in the league as far as rush yards allowed per game. But that's going to happen when you have people putting up almost 300 yards on you. As far as total points, yeah. We're dead last in that category too. So our defense is soft. They're terrible. Don't even know why I'm checking this and putting myself through this, but I'm just curious to see if we have any players in the conversation for yearly awards. Looks like Jalen Hurts is the front runner for MVP, which is kind of, you know, prior to him getting hurt, kind of the story in real life too. Deshaun Watson's up there. We don't have anybody. Coach of the year, no. Lovey Smith, not going to be in there. Nick Sirianni, actually, again, in real life also could be a candidate too for coach of the year but no lovey smith is not going to make an appearance on here let's see uh, as far as the afc offensive player of the year we're not going to have anybody there's nick chubb alan lazard with the bills i still I'm, I'm not sure how or why they acquired him in this franchise because don't see why the packers would let him go but apparently they did defense there is not a snowball's chance and you know what <laughs> that we're going to have a defensive player on this list. No, definitely not. Our defense sucks. Uh, let's take a look at the best QB. We're not going to see uh, Deshaun Watson, actually, who we just faced. We're not going to see Brett Hundley on here. We're not going to see Cam Newton on here. We're not going to see Tony Pollard on here. Colts have a lot of players on this on this, uh, on this this list. Alan Lazard, best wide receiver in the AFC. Wow, I'm shocked. Okay, um, offensive line dominated by the Colts. I mean, top five players in the league are Indianapolis Colts, which is crazy. Very curious now to see uh, just how good they really are before we dive into this episode, because I've never seen that. Yeah, I mean, that'll get it done for you. Five players allowing zero sacks. Uh, that's, that's pretty good. I recollect that when we played... Matty Ice and the Colts, we did not get a sack on him, and we're going to have to actually face them again, the Colts, in, in Week 18. So before we get going on this episode, I want to take a look at the draft prospects. We just did that deep dive on the draft class a few episodes ago, and I'm just curious to see if anybody's changed in terms of you know scouting percentage and uh, what we already know about them. so here we go so it looks like tony baldwin they did actually give us that additional percentage if you watch that episode the, the episode prior 
We didn't have anything additional learned about Tony Baldwin, but now he shows 100%. So I guess it just took a few weeks. So we, we know now that Tony Baldwin is, in fact, around one to two talent. I was undecided if I wanted to try to make a move on him in the first round, especially with some of those defenders like Keegan McGriff and Jalen Burnett. But let's just take a look at Baldwin's skills here. We should know them all at this point. Again, just freak athlete, crazy athlete. Um, as far as his skills, looks like kind of solid Bs across the board. A awareness, A run block finesse, but nothing that really jumps out at me. Now, if we have our additional focus on him, I'll bet you we have it on that other tight end too, uh, Bruce Joyner. Let's take a look at, at Bruce Joyner and see. Yes. Yes, we do. So, okay, this is very interesting. So we know that Bruce Joyner is a true round one to two talent. So I can almost guarantee now that I'm okay with Tony Baldwin kind of slipping through our fingertips and we can go after Bruce Joyner because he may be equally as good of a player and he actually has a lot more A traits than Baldwin does. He has A short route, A spectacular catch, A medium route. I like Bruce Joyner, yeah. and I think that that kind of seals the deal for me. And I know now that I would like to go kind of more defensively heavy in the first round, with the exception of probably Damon Sanders. Yeah. We do need a quarterback. So let's dive into the weekly strategy here. We take on Dallas this week in Arlington, a very good team. We all know Madden loves the Cowboys, too. Um, I think that the game plan this week has to be Defending the deep pass. I know they have Ezekiel Elliott. Actually, it just it just hit me This is gonna be a revenge game for Tony Pollard. This is gonna be Tony Pollard's first game Back in Arlington since he was traded to us. So interesting kind of storyline here We take a look at the Cowboys defense. They are extremely well against defending the rush The aforementioned Tony Pollard will be rushing the ball. So will he have a good game? I don't know. They don't allow a lot of points per game. They have Micah Parsons, probably arguably the most versatile player in the NFL. They have Leighton Vander Esch. They have uh, CeeDee Lamb at wide receiver. They got Dak and Zeke, the usual suspects. So a very good team. I think that our game plan, we're going to try to get Pollard going because this is going to be, as I mentioned, kind of a revenge game for us. So we're going to see if we can put the game plan to... Uh, running the ball outside we'll evaluate at halftime and see you know how bad we're getting our cheeks clapped in this game but uh, <laughs> for now we're gonna go with Pollard quick look at the Cowboys roster here I mean you guys know it's the usual suspect Dak Prescott gonna be slinging the ball Ezekiel Elliott gonna be running the ball no more Tony Pollard obviously he is with us fullback is Ben Mason wide receiver all right hello Brandon Cooks another team that Picked up a player that we cut, and I guess he's their highest rated higher overall than C.D. Lamb. Not sure if I agree with that, but Brandon Cooks will be their wide receiver number one. They got C.D. Lamb, awesome player. Michael Gallup, their wide receiving room is lit. Let me tell you what, James Washington, as I look at this, their sixth string wide receiver is a higher rated overall player than our first string wide receiver being Mohamed Sanu. <laughs> Mohamed Sanu is, I think, a 71. Their sixth string wide receiver is higher rated than our first string. So that sucks. Dalton Schultz at tight end. Very good. Left tackle, Tyron Smith. And also Tyler Smith, uh, obviously Cowboys. First round pick in the draft. 24th overall pick last year. Pretty good tackles. Jason Peters, the 40-year-old, uh, 19-year veteran started on Dallas's practice squad at the beginning of this year he's had a nice stretch still very good at a 76 rated Tyler Biotish is the center right guard highest rated right guard in Madden Zach Martin we had to go against the second highest rated guard being Wyatt Teller last week Zach Martin highest rated 98 overall Terrence Steele, right tackle. Left end, Marcus Lawrence, very good, solid veteran. Dante Fowler Jr., eight-year pro, Florida Gator on the right side. Defensive tackle, Osa and Tristan Hill. Left outside linebacker, we got Anthony Barr. 
middle linebacker Leighton Vander Esch, 81 rated player in this game. Jabril Cox, also probably going to be seeing some action potentially. Micah Parsons, the unstoppable force, X Factor, two year Nittany Lion, probably going to be wreaking some havoc back there. I presume most uh, high rated defensive rushers do on our sorry team. Trayvon Diggs, brother of Stefan, superstar corner, Anthony Brown, Jordan Lewis, also going to see the field. Malik Hooker, good secondary, J. Ron Curse, kicking the ball away, Jason Myers, and putting the ball away, Brian Anger. So Dallas, very good roster. High rated, lots of superstars, lots of X factors. We need a win, guys. That is, that's apparent. We haven't tasted victory in quite some time. It's been a few games, and we need one today. So we're going to head on down to Arlington. I mean, just look at all the stars here. Superstars, X Factors. They got them lined up across the board. We're going to head on down to Arlington. We're going to go to AT&T, taking on Mike McCarthy, former Packers Super Bowl winning coach and the Dallas Cowboys. Should be a good one. Without further ado, let's get down to the game. All right. So Texans set to receive the ball here in Arlington. AT&T Stadium, JoJo Natson going to catch it and kneel this thing in the end zone. We get the ball first. We want to strike quick. Lovey Smith saying some words of wisdom to Cam Newton there. Lovey just let go in real life. Actually, as a matter of fact, Cam Newton, 14 and 14, close to 3,000 yards, though. Not really a great season. He hasn't played all of it, though. But we've seen some... Semi highs from Cam Newton, and we've seen some ultra lows from Cam Newton. So, what will we see today? I would have to think the latter, but you never know. This time we have Pollard in the I form, gonna get an early give. Has some decent blocking, but nothing really too crazy. Only able to pick up a gain of three on that play. Second and seven now. We're gonna come out shotgun formation. Gonna put Seals Jones on a little out route. Could have Micah Parsons uncovered off the left side. Gotta watch out for that. Nope, I like Bobo. Bobo Wilson, MVP. Hello, sir. I saw him get open immediately. Jordan Lewis was able to bring him down, but not until Bobo picked up 14. That's a good chain mover to start this thing off. All right, so we are about eight yards away from midfield now. First and 10. Going to come out in the shotgun formation here. Would love to see a big game from big game from Tony Pollard. Haven't seen that in a little while. And uh, blocks were shed instantly. Wow, Chase Allen. <laughs> couldn't hold his block for more than about two seconds before it got shed there. And Pollard was only able to pick up two yards on the play. So not... Really what you want to see. Second and eight now. We're on Dallas's 44. Cam going to stay in this shotgun formation. And there's Sanu. Free form completion. Got to get better at that. That was a good curl route, but I also free form let him down. Got to get better at that free form completion. We started doing that last week against the Browns, but unfortunately, game was kind of already over at that point. All right, first and 10 now. We did make it past midfield, which is always nice. Going to give a little outside give to Pollard here. See if uh, Seals Jones can hold a block. He does, but defenders were right there to greet us after only a pickup of four. Not really great. I would love, 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 love to see Pollard just have a good game here and take some of the pressure off of our passing game. I kind of like Westbrook on a streak, possibly. We'll see. Nope, but I do like Seals Jones. That was a good pass. Perfect accuracy. Ricky able to pick up 14. And we have a good opening drive going here. That's one thing that uh, we haven't really had in a lot of these losses. We tend to go three and out on our first drive and punt the ball back to the opposition. Don't like to do that because you want to obviously score on your first drive, yes, but time of possession is huge. So first and 10 now, going to try to go back outside to Tony Pollard again. This time, blocks will sustain a bit. Pollard wasn't able to break the tackle. He had J. Ron Curse, the strong safety there to meet him, but he did pick up six, so not terrible. 
I can definitely live with that. Second and four here. Right on the red zone. There's Ricky. Seals Jones catching a streak up the seams. And he catches a touchdown pass. That was another pass lead. I led him away from Malik Hooker to the right. Ricky caught a still pretty contested ball. And he found his way to the end zone. So quick strike. That was actually Leighton Vander Esch was dropping back there in coverage. Malik Hooker got there late. Quick strike offense. We haven't seen that virtually at all this season. We just saw it there. Justin Rohrwasser going to try to make this thing 7-0. He should. But how about that? Texans go up 7-0 on the opening drive of the game. I love to see it. It's definitely a lot easier when you're not playing with your back against the wall in the first three minutes. We have a little bit of cushion in case uh, our terrible defense exposes us like they did last week. Taking a look at the season for Dak Prescott, pretty good in terms of numbers. 25 TDs, 11 picks, not quite 3,000 yards. You figure that with the weapons that he has at his disposal, that he would be closer to some of the top league leaders in that in that low to mid 3,000 range, but he's not. Um, so anyways, he's going to come out first and 10 in the single back formation. Probably going to be a run to Zeke here, you would think. We'll see if it is. It is, in fact. Zeke cuts back, but Quincy Roche was there to bring him down for only a gain of one. Quincy Roche, of course, had that breakout scenario a couple episodes ago. Couldn't capitalize on it like I would have hoped. And uh, Quincy Roche is still a pretty good player for us. He's We've called his name a lot, which is kind of... I didn't really expect to do that, but we have. Dak going to come out single back again. And this time it will not be a give to Zeke. It will be a pass. And that's a completion to Michael Gallup, able to pick up seven on the play. <laughs> Getting very close to the first down sticks. We got Dallas in a third down here. Chance to get... Did I just call a timeout? I hope I didn't. I didn't mean to. Okay, I did. I guess I pressed that middle button on the, on the PS5. Didn't mean to do that. Anyways, uh, we're back. Chance to get Dallas, Dallas's offense off the field. Not sure if we can do it. If Danny Trevathan can get back there to Dak, no, no, we missed a tackle. Come on, we need to get Janoris Jenkins back in here. Wow, shoestring tackle on Brandon Cooks. But I thought for sure that we had Dak dead to rights in the backfield, but we just kind of missed him. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Trevathan, I, I, mean, I guess that's on me. Trevathan just kept running, and then Brandon Cook shook us and was able to pick up huge yardage. He's going to drop back and take off, and there's a catch to C.D. Lamb. That was a weird kind of floater throw there. Dak already starting out three for three, 64 yards. C.D. Lamb catches it, brings it all the way down to the 11. All right, so Dallas threatening now. First and 10 from the 11. Dak coming out single back. Going to drop back to pass this time. And there is Brandon Cooks again. Nearly, nearly able to get a touchdown. But instead, he's going to have it about at the one-yard line, I would say. Nice little curl route from Brandon Cooks there. The nine-year player from Oregon State. But now Dallas has it on the one. <gasps> Oddly enough, though, they're coming out shotgun three wide receiver formation, so I don't like this at all. It's probably going to be a run to Zeke, but probably not now that I audibled. Nope, it won't be. It's going to be a catch and a touchdown to C.D. Lamb. That was too easy. C.D. caught that thing on the slant. Jason Myers coming out to potentially knot this thing up at 7-7, and he will. So after a very good opening drive from us, Dallas responds with a very quick drive of their own. And now this thing is knotted up 7-7. Ball on the 25-yard line. We're going to flip this play, but we're also going to bring it back out to the other side. I don't want to run against Micah Parsons. Oh, Pollard just with no blocks there, nothing developing. Anthony Barr, the linebacker, brings him down for no gain. Second and 10 here. Going to come out four verts. Not sure if this is the best decision in the world, but we're going to do it anyways. See if somebody can get open here. 
I don't really like anybody. Maybe Seals Jones on the floater. He catches it. He moss Leighton Van Der Esch. Wow. We lobbed that thing up in the air for Ricky Seals Jones. That was a good pass. We did pass lead him uh, forward, kind of an over-the-shoulder throw. And he just flat out mossed Leighton Van Der Esch. So Ricky Seals Jones making some early noise in this game. You love to see it. Love when you call other guys' names besides just the usual suspects like Bobo Wilson, Dee Dee Westbrook. You love to get some other guys involved. So now we're going to come out I formation. Going to be another give to Pollard. This time he does have a little bit better blocks. Johnny Stanton couldn't hold it for as long as we needed. And it's only going to be a pickup of four. Okay, big third and six here. This could be the difference of going for it on fourth down or continuing our driving our trek to the end zone so just got to go out here and pick this thing up or at least try to nope micah parsons was there too soon so now what do we do 53 yarder from justin Rohrwasser. i think we go for it i think we go for the field goal no win today in arlington so confident that i can boot this thing through and no there's that god dang kick thing man i swear to god Oh my god. I got to I got to replay. I got to show you guys the replay. Someone tell me why this happens. Cuz I sure as heck don't know. I'm going to show you. Exactly what I'll show you when I edit it. When I edit this video, I'll show you. You try to hit the kick and it like the kicking meter brackets off at the end and you just kick some little freaking wounded duck field goal. And it does it all the freaking time and I hate it. Man, I'm livid after that. Should have been points on the board. Instead, it's not. It's a completion of CD Lamb. Center in my chi. Good vibes flowing. Positive vibes. Got to get something going here. We're back. Dak Prescott coming out shotgun. Probably going to be a give to Zeke. Nope, it's a play fake. Is that gonna, Dak going to take off this time? He fumbles it. Yes, Jordan Evans there to scoop it up. Thank you. Ball don't lie. Madden God smiled on us. Dak Prescott fumbled it. Jordan Evans was there to pick it up. I was about to throw my controller through my 55-inch TV here. Jordan Evans might have uh, just prevented that from happening. So thank you, Jordan. All right, so chances like that don't come around all the time. Got to pay it off with some points here, right? First and 10, ball on the 50. We're dropping back, and there's Tameric Hemingway. Tameric Hemingway. When do we call his name? I saw him getting open on the streak. Prior to this game, this man had one catch for 20 yards all season. That one pretty darn close to 20 as well. And that was a good pass from Cam. Fit it into a tight window. Trayvon Diggs was right there. Able to make the tackle, but uh, Tameric Hemingway able to pick up great yardage and move the sticks for us. Thank you, my friend. All things considered, I am not mad, though, guys. I swear to God. Oh, my God. Man, I'm livid after that. We are beating Dallas in terms of yardage. Score seven to seven, knotted up. We dodged a huge bullet several plays ago. It's second and 11. And now we just gotta pay this thing off with some points. We cannot come away empty handed on this drive. So ball on the 37 yard line. It's gonna be a play fake. And we have Seals Jones there open and Cam missed him. Cam Newton, my friend. Can't do that, buddy. You can't not do that. We had him wide open. Third and 11 now. Got to pick this thing up. There's D.D. Westbrook. Good pass. Good completion. Open in the middle of the field. Meek Mill right there to pick it up. Cam is 70% completion so far, though. 131 yards. So as I'm sitting here dogging him, he's not playing terrible. Just, just making some bad throws at the wrong time. That has been Cam Newton on our team. Bad throws at the wrong time. All right, so ball on the 17. Question of the day. Can we get Pollard going on some good positive yards? We cannot because our players cannot hold blocks to save their life. Tyrell Crosby 
Got his block shed instantly by Demarcus Lawrence. Third and three here. Need a big pickup. Uh, like Pollard, if we can get him. Oh, he almost had it, but it was an early breakup. Leighton Van Der Esch, who apparently is one of the best coverage linebackers in the game, was right there to break that thing up at the last minute. Thought we almost had a great completion in a tight window, but nonetheless, here is Justin Rohrwasser. Hoping to atone for the last field goal, and he will. So, okay. I'm okay with that outcome. It puts us up by three. 10-7 is your score. Could be a lot worse. Now we just got to go play some defense. Prescott with the fumble last drive. Looking to uh, repent for those sins. Hopefully he won't. But that is a nice catch to Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks just shoves off Janoris Jenkins like he's 250 pounds and hits the weights on the regular. What is going on, man? Brandon Cooks, small, speedy receiver, not known for those big trucks and those big stiff arms. But he just gave Janoris Jenkins a facial and nobody was there. No safeties were there in coverage. That's depressing. I am depressed. You may see a 32-year-old man cry before this video is over. It's not out of the cards. One play, 70 yards. That is uh, what you love to see if you're a defensive coordinator. Now we got our backs against the wall again. Brian Anger boots this thing away to JoJo Natson. Kick returns are very difficult in this game. Or maybe it's just my team. It's probably just my team. My team probably just sucks. That's okay, though. Second and seven now. Going to come out empty this time. Could have Nats in or Sanu. We have no coverage linebackers in the middle of the field, so we could have one of those guys. Actually like Natson. That was almost a pick by Leighton Van Der Esch. Is Leighton Van Der Esch, is he a 99-rated overall player in this game? I can't figure it out because he is just, he's everywhere. Everywhere on the field. We've called his name about 30 times so far. Nonetheless, third and seven here already faced into a third and long. Don't love to see that. But there's D.D. Westbrook, catches it, and not able to pick up the first down. He's a yard short. All right, so I think we come out in QB sneak formation and see what they show us. They show us a big hole. I think we take it. Yes. <laughs> they show us a tremendous hole. I mean, how do we not take that? I mean, that hole was so big, we might have to call up Stanley Yelnats and get him in here to patch that thing up because there was just, I mean, I know that is uh, super cheese, right? But nobody would go for it. Third down on your own 29. But I mean, look what they showed us, though. We, we, we had to, right? Like Bobo Wilson. Nope. Oh, my God. Dodged a bullet there. Wow. That was J. Ron Curse. Didn't even see him. So now we find ourselves seven yards away from midfield. I just want to get Tony Pollard going, but so far it has proven to be very difficult to run on this Dallas Cowboys front line. Can we change that now? We kind of can. Gain of about four, five, they say. So a little bit better than prior. Still not good, though. But I guess I'll take it. Second and five. One good thing I can say is we are controlling time of possession pretty well. Got to get this thing past midfield, though. And just going to dump this thing to Pollard. They're giving it They're giving it to me. Wide open on the flat. Not going to pass it up. We do get stopped mere inches short of the first down marker, however. And I think we trust Pollard here, most definitely. I think we definitely trust Pollard. I trust him to pick up inches, even though he hasn't had a great game so far. I trust him to pick up inches. Can he do it? Yes, he can. He'll pick up more than inches. Pollard now at 11 for 30. So averaging just a bit less than three yards per carry. Not good at all. Not going to go away from Pollard quite yet, even though he hasn't had a great game. We're going to stick with him. We're going to trust him. Try to bounce this thing outside. 
This time we do have some blockers. Thank you. And Pollard juking J. Ron Curse, the safety, out of his jock strap. I literally see his jock strap on the field. Get the athletic trainers out here. Somebody go pick that thing up. Look at that. Oh my gosh. J. Ron Curse may have broken ankles and could be out for several weeks after that shake from Tony Pollard. So now we are just going to go back to Pollard. Maybe he has a little bit of uh, momentum after that play. Maybe we can ride that hot streak a little bit or just get stuffed for a gain of one. Who knows? We'll find out, though. Here's Pollard. Pollard has some blocks, but not the speed to get to the outside. Anthony Brown, seven-year player from Purdue, was in there to uh, to stop us. Going to send Westbrook in motion. I actually like him. I like him there. High pass from Cam. Not a great pass. But DD was able to haul it in, luckily. Kind of bailed us out there a bit. And a touchdown would be huge here. I would settle for the points, yes. But a touchdown would be huge. And we're actually going to put Chase Allen on a little out route. I like that. Nope, I do see Westbrook, though. Dee, Dee Westbrook catching it on the drag. Able to move the chains. That was clutch. And now I think that we are just going to let this thing tick down to the two-minute warning. So it's been an interesting uh, semi-back-and-forth contest here so far in the first half. I'm not highly displeased in our efforts. That's for sure. I'll feel a lot better if we can score a touchdown here rather than a field goal from Justin Rohrwasser, obviously. Let's see if we can do just that. We're going to come out single back. And I kind of like Westbrook, but not really. I did lead him away from the defender, which was good. But it was a difficult pass to make, and we did not make it. So now second and ten. Got to try to see if we can get this, man. Pollard, if we can get there, but we cannot because Micah Parsons. If we had just a split second more, Pollard was wide open in the field. You saw the windup coming, but Micah Parsons just too fast, too good. Also matched up against Isaiah Wilson. Not a desirable matchup for us at all. No! So now can we pick this thing up? I'm not necessarily upset with a field goal from Warwasser, but a touchdown would just make me feel so much better. Hi, and there's Micah Parsons again. Somebody block this man. Somebody block this man, please. God, I'm so sick of that, man. If it's not Miles, if it's not Micah Parsons, it's Miles Garrett. If it's not Miles Garrett, it's Khalil Mack. If it's not Khalil Mack, it's anybody. I mean, man, oh man, it's so hard to get time back there in that pocket. But if we had more time, we had Pollard wide open. That would have been an easy touchdown. That last pass, I was going to try to kind of high point it up to Bobo Wilson. It wasn't going to be a, you know, a gimme by any stretch, but still. Could have had a shot at least. Instead, the Cowboys get it with a minute 15. So what are they going to do? Are they going to be content to run it with Zeke? Are they going to try to be aggressive? They're going to be aggressive, it looks like. And Dak is going to be sacked by Ndamukong Sue. Ndamukong Sue, nice to call his name. He just got a contract extension several episodes ago, so it's nice to see that. Now you figure it'll probably be a run to Zeke just to kind of get this thing into halftime. Which it will be. Zeke cuts back, brought down by Ha Ha Clinton Dix. We're passing the ball good. We're kind of starting to get the, the rushes going. But look at the snaps. We've dominated time of possession. 37 snaps for us to, I think it said 12. For Dallas, that big scoop and score was the main thing that hurt us. But we have dominated time of possession which you love to see. And let's just kind of see how this second half goes. Hey guys, really quick, just wanted to say thank you to everyone who has watched and supported this series so far. I hope you guys are having fun with it. I've been having a blast making it so far. Season hasn't really gone how we'd hoped, but let's be honest, we knew that was gonna be the case, right? This is a cupcake team. 
Uh, we knew that going into it, episode one, when we built the teams, kind of the whole point. But the offseason is vastly approaching. It's four weeks away. We're going to make some big moves in the offseason. We're going to shake things up a lot and hopefully make this terrible team a lot, lot better. So just wanted to say thanks again. Game against Dallas here. Pretty close. We have a chance to still edge out the W. So let's see if we can do just that and get back to Arlington. I think we do need to switch the focus to running inside. We haven't had too much success on the outside. And I'm going to keep defend the deep pass for Dak Prescott. I think that worked out well for us. He didn't torch us like he easily could have. So, you know, 14 points. I'll live with that. We just got to score more than 13. Simple as that. So Prescott and his troops going to come out here in the weak formation. Probably going to be a give to Zeke. It will be. And we do have Danny Shelton, Landon Collins, and Danny Trevathan all met Zeke right there after only a gain of one. Prescott coming out empty. Going to take off and run with it. And this time he just slides wisely, not wanting to get another fumble. Prescott plays it safe, only able to pick up about four on that play. Here comes Prescott again, and he'll take off again, but this time huge hole. Can he? We make him fumble again. We cannot. That time we had nobody in the middle of the field. Wish we would have had a spy or somebody out there. Trayvon Diggs getting the crowd hyped here at AT&T. Delayed give to Zeke, but it's a play fake, and that was good defense from Troy Pride. Didn't get the pick. But he did get his hands in there, which you love to see. Prescott again in tight shotgun. Zeke to his right. Going to be a give to Zeke this time. This time Zeke has a big hole. Ha ha, Clinton Dix makes the touchdown saving diving tackle. That was the first time we really saw Elliott burn us up the middle like that. Did come at a good time, though, as Dallas finds himself... On the 16-yard line, coming out in the full house, they call it. Two running backs and a fullback who's actually a tight end formation, but it's a pass. And what the heck is Janoris Jenkins doing? Oh, my God. Dude, my man just barrel rolled like the guy from Star Fox. Do a barrel roll. And I don't think I switched on to him. I mean, yeah, I mean, look. <laughs> My man just did a barrel roll for no reason. What are you doing, my guy? That is just... That's just dandy. That's just dandy right there. Dallas going to go up by eight after Janoris Jenkins just decided to frolic through the field here at AT&T Stadium. I, I mean, I don't even have commentary for that, man. I mean, what's my guy doing? Oh, it's just so bad sometimes, guys. You, 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 you really can't make this stuff up, you know? You just, you can't make it up if you tried. So now, uh, I think that I have a play fake call, but I don't like it. I don't like it because I feel like we're going to have instant pressure. Matter of fact, I know we are. Dallas just pressed the line, so we're going to have to audible this to Pollard. I think it's the right move. I mean, doesn't end up really materializing into anything, but it's better than what I feel would have been a sack in the backfield and a loss of big yardage. Dropping back on second down now. I kind of like Bobo Wilson. If we can get it to him and Cam leads him too far. That's what I'm talking about, man. That was uh, Bobo Wilson was just wide open. Nobody really close to him at all. And we just we weren't able to find him. Unfortunately, we were not able to find him. That would have been a big chain mover. But instead, it's nothing. So got a double team Micah Parsons. He is in the zone, which scares the ever living daylights out of me. I kind of like Bobo there. Bobo somehow able to hang on to that great catch. Cam put it right in the bread basket that time. That was not an easy throw at all. High degree of difficulty. 
We fit it just in the middle of the seams there. It was just enough to move the sticks, and that was big. Ooh, they're making it tough for me to not audible this, but I, I'm going to stay true to what I called. I mean, they're pressing everybody on the left side there, but I'm going to stay true to what I called. I think that we can pick it up. Of course we can't because we have the best player in the world, Leighton Van Der Esch there. Man, this dude is like, I swear when we did the, uh, we did the roster at the beginning of the episode, dude was about an 81 rated. He's playing like he's a 99 rated or better. I know this is bad to go for it, but I just have to. I actually like Westbrook there. Good pass. That time came through a perfect accuracy. About freaking time. You would have seen a 32-year-old man cry on YouTube if we wouldn't have completed that pass. Still doing a good job controlling the clock, at least. Pollard just getting stuffed left and right. That time it was Micah Parsons. Of course, we know he's everywhere on the field. That does not surprise me. One iota, but it still upsets me, though. You know, I'm not surprised, but I'm upset. All right, second and 11 now. We're behind the sticks, which you never love to see. And I kind of like Seals Jones there, but that was just good coverage from Trayvon Diggs. Okay, so third and 11 now. This is a big defining moment in this game, I feel like. Could have Westbrook or Wilson. I actually like Westbrook. Wow, that was a terrible pass. That was a terrible pass. That was such a bad pass. That was such a bad pass. Guess what? That was such a bad pass. I didn't even pass lead him that time. Falls right into the lap of Anthony Brown. I don't even know why I'm mad at it at this point. Because I should be uh, accustomed to it by now. You see D.D. Westbrook. There he is. Soft spot in the zone coverage. And watch where Cam throws it. I mean, you would have... You would have thunk that Anthony Brown was running a curl on that play or something because Cam Newton just threw a absolutely uh, woeful and atrocious pass. And excuse me while a 32-year-old man goes and cries. So we give the ball right back to Dallas. That was not what I wanted to see happen. Far from it. Gonna be a give to Zeke now. Ha ha Clinton Dix somehow able to get him down. Second and 11. Dallas with great field position, of course. Already in plus territory. Gonna be another give to Zeke. It looks like it will be. Zeke juking. Finally able to be brought down by Ha ha Clinton Dix. But now Elliott just past the half century mark. Dak coming out empty. That's never a good thing. We know he can run, but there's Danny Trevathan. Haven't called his name in a while. Definitely needed to call it there. He just shoots into the backfield. Prescott never had time. Trevathan brings him down to the turf. Dak going to drop back to pass now this time. And he has a man. Oh, we misjudged the tackle. That's C.D. Lamb. Troy Pride just missed him completely. I thought Lamb was going to go out of bounds there. He did not. He most certainly stayed in bounds. Troy Pride just ran right past him. That'll bring it to the fourth quarter. So 13 to 21. Definitely not out of this thing by any stretch of the imagination. However, you just get the feeling that this game could be so much closer than what it is. It's not, though. Now we got to somehow come up with the goal line stand of our life. Good freaking luck. That's going to be a give to the fullback, Ben Mason. He actually loses one. Ball still going to be marked at the one-yard line, however. And uh, I think we just send the house at him. I don't like doing that. It's probably going to backfire, but we, we just have to. They're going to score regardless. And there's Zeke. Yes, good decision. Javon Hargrave there. Now, what's Dallas going to do? They may kick the field goal. They are going to kick the field goal. Yes, 
So huge win from our defense. We were able to keep them out of the end zone. And that is really all you can hope for. I'll take the points. It's a nine-point game now. Definitely not out of it. Got a lot of time. We also have Cam Newton, though. It's actually an 11-point game. My math skills, not the sharpest, as you can see. What's JoJo Natson doing back there? All right, so huge drive, guys. We got to find a way to get some more time here. Micah Parsons just... I don't know. He's been doing whatever he wants to. We're going to double team him. See if we can maybe get Westbrook or possibly Sanu or somebody. And there's Westbrook. And that is a diving interception by Trayvon Diggs. Can't even be mad at that. That's just a heck of a play. That was just a heck of a play. I thought we had Westbrook in the middle. I mean, look what Trayvon Diggs does, man. Trayvon Diggs just dove out of nowhere. Yep, that's unfortunate. That is highly unfortunate, but it is what it is. Just got to play defense. Just got to shut up and play defense. That's all we can do. Dak coming out empty, as he likes to do. Dalton Schultz catches it and somehow just rolls to the ground. Doing what Janoris Jenkins did earlier for God knows why in the end zone. You know, I'm just going to run commit here. Maybe. Good thing we did. That could have backfired, but Ezekiel Elliott just shaking off all kinds of tackles, man. Our defense is so bad. It makes me just want to take this PS5 controller. I just, I just pulled it out. Lost audio there for a minute. It makes me want to take this PS5 controller. Break it in half, open up my window, chuck it two stories into the street, and then, get this, it's about 12 o'clock in the morning, go start up my car, back out of my driveway, and run over the PS5 controller about five times, take the piece of the PS5 controller that's left, and then bash my 55-inch TV with it. That's what it makes me want to do. So 31-13 now, I don't even know... I just, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I have no commentary for this 31-13 ball game. But we're still playing, though. Can we get a block on the screen? Of course not, we can't. But Tony Pollard does shake a man off. And he also uh, shook off Anthony Brown there, too, it looked like. And turned something into nothing anyways, if nothing else. So second and four now. Still a two-touchdown game, so we're not out of it. And there's Pollard finding some good space on the draw, able to pick up about nine yards. Pollard now at 50. Might be a little too little too late for him, though. We'll see. And based on what Dallas is showing me, we're going to audible this to a run. I think it's the right move. And it is the right move. Pollard with speed. Just get that thing out of bounds. Don't want to risk something like a fumble happening. That would be just tragic. I would lose a PS5 controller if that happened. All right. First and 10. Now we're past midfield. I like, uh, who's that, Sanu? Yes, it is. I like Sanu on the little comeback route. Got to kind of go up tempo here. Not quite in a hurry up, but we, we can't be wasting time. We got to make something happen. Bobo Wilson, just give it to him. He drops it, of course. I know, I saw. We had Seals Jones wide open there in the middle. I did see that, of course. Third and four now. We are past midfield, so that's good. But do we audible this to Pollard? I think we do because it is four down territory. And I like what the front four are showing me for Dallas. And Pollard, can he get there? He cannot. A little bit short. They're going to say two yards. Mm. Two yards short. Fourth and two. Big play here, guys. If, we're, if we score, we are not out of this game. But we're not going to score. Oh, Leighton Vander Esch. 
It's just such an amazing player. I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting how good he is. He's a 99 superstar X Factor player. I keep forgetting that. There's Zeke starting to get it going now. Trevathan wraps him up. Oh, man, that's tough. That is tough indeed. Oh, I should have ran commit because you got to figure it'll be a run. It will be this time. I mean, I don't know uh, how we can not bring him down on a tackle there. I'm pressing X. I'm not even getting the tackle animations, guys. I mean, come on. You, I know you're with me, right? I'm not even getting the tackle animations. Look at that. Troy Pride, he's right there. I'm pressing X. Oh, let's not tackle Ezekiel Elliott. Let's try to set a block on the tight end. Or let's try to shed a block on the tight end. It's like he just got wrapped into an animation there. So frustrating, man. Third and eight now, probably. Uh, this could be a pass or a run. Obviously, in the game of football, it's going to be one of those two things. But I could see this going either way, really. Single back formation. Dak comes out. It is going to be a pass. He's looking, he's looking, and just throws it away. Okay, so it's going to be a long field goal for Jason Myers. He could miss this. And again, this game is still not over. It's not over. Myers sneaks that thing through just barely. Just barely. That thing was fading off to the left. But Myers was able to kick it through. Now it's a three possession game. So things looking a bit more grim. And our defense, we just cannot prevent points. No game this season. I think the lowest we've allowed was uh, in that in that Philadelphia game, I want to say. Uh, I think we allowed 20 maybe if memory serves. But that's that's the lowest we've allowed. We're just going to throw this thing up to Sanu. Give him a chance. No pass interference. I thought it might be. Twas not, though. Now it's second and ten. 21 seconds to go until the two-minute warning. We're going to play fake. Just give it to Seals Jones. That's a cheat code play. But right now, I don't even think a cheat code is going to help us. So leave me alone. Please. I beg you. First and 10 now, ball at the 48-yard line. Nobody's guarding Seals Jones. Do we streak him? Probably not. Nope. Instead, go to Bobo. Cam was throwing out of the sack, but still completed it. That was a pretty good pass. That's going to take us to the two-minute warning. Got to hurry up here. Time is not on our side. Kind of like sending Sanu on a streak. They're pressing him pretty tight. And we are going to give him a chance. And uh, Anthony Brown was there to break that thing up at the last second. That was good defense. Can't be mad at that. Big play here. Trying to somehow stay competitive. Somehow stay in this game. Third and four. And Micah Parsons just sacks us. I don't even know, guys. I don't know what to say. I probably held on to the ball too long. Yes, I get it. But, I mean, Micah Parsons is just playing like, like a loose cannon out there. We have no time. <sighs> Whatever. Whatever, man. That's going to be your ball game. I am just so frustrated. I came into the Browns game with a lot more positive energy. This game I did not. And that's going to be your final score, 34-13. We looked like absolute dog doo-doo in this game what but we always look like dog doo-doo but this game we look even worse than dog doo-doo bro what are you talking about man all right so there's your score guys 34 13 that was a tough one that was a tough one that was a tough one and guess what it doesn't get any easier because we play kansas city next week patrick mahomes and Juju Smith-Schuster. They don't have Kadarius Toney in this in this franchise. I think the Giants still do. Clyde Edwards-Alaire, Travis Kelsey. But this game was one of those ones that we flirted with winning at the beginning of the game. And as the game went on, we just got progressively worse. I did make a couple bad decisions, but I don't take full credit for this loss because... 
I think Cam Newton played like garbage. I think our offensive line is just so terrible that we never have time to throw. Newton, 241, one touchdown, two interceptions. Dak Prescott, perfect quarterback rating. So there you go. Tony Pollard, not much of a revenge game, 19 for 70. Zeke did cross 100. Receiving, T, uh, CD Lamb tore us up. Brandon Cooks really tore us up. Ricky Seals-Jones had a good one. D.D. Westbrook had a good one. That's about it, though. I mean, blocking. I, it's Isaiah Wilson. It's it's Isaiah Wilson every game on that right side. So right tackle. we got to replace the right tackle. Because it is him every single time. It most definitely is. So, uh, yeah, that was a game, guys. All I can say is we're that much closer to the offseason. That's the victory that I take away from this. We are one game and now four four weeks closer to the offseason. So three and ten. We might have the worst record in the NFL now. We'll check that next week. But thanks for tuning in, guys. As always, I appreciate it. I'm going to go cry for a little bit. Uh, maybe play a different game besides Madden. You know, a little palate cleanser to get that taste out of my mouth. But I still had fun, kind of, uh, <laughs> but I did. I appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, I will catch you next time. Until then, peace.